Good morning and welcome. Welcome to Yoga Solutions Live with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. I hope you're doing wonderfully wherever you are on this uh, chilly but rather pleasant late spring morning on Tuesday the 24th, 2022. Um, yes, let's see. Uh, I've got a question today uh, from Dan Bandu. He's um, <clears throat> yeah, he's a long-term student, and um, let's see what the question is. So my request is: Can you offer a practice of yoga that works with opening of feet and toes in order to find balance in tree pose? And if you've got time, triangle. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, in order to find balance, that, that was, um, okay, uh, good association, how to open the feet in order to find balance, because that, that is what is required. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I, I know something of DB's history, um, he, as a young lad in his 20s, he um, had a... Um, a big accident where he ended up uh, mashing up his left foot and uh, one of the reasons he's worked with me for a, for a while now is that I um, gave him some stuff that kind of gave him back a sensation of having a foot and a bit of mobility there and um, so he's been working with me for a while but um, with uh, following that um, but yes that was that was a good question because um, opening up the feet is the thing that you need to do if you want to find balance. Oh, I'll, I'll explain. Um, let me just put up my standing cameras. <clears throat> there's, there's two ways of um, supporting yourself when you're upright. And when people are talking about balance, they normally um, mean something that involves having to think about not falling over. <laughs> so. Uh, just for um, uh, purposes of illustration, if you take the, uh, try taking the weight through one foot. Okay, now, two ways of balancing yourself. Majority of people, because their, their feet are um, uh, not that responsive, balance will mean how do you hold yourself together as you try and balance your weight over over a sleepy foot okay so and what will happen is the the knees will pull up probably the thighs the hip everything will get tense in holding you together whilst you try and relax your foot that's the kind of uh, more common way of doing things uh, and see if that's true for you um, the it, if what you think of as balance as being able to relax into contact and feel supported, then what you need is a foot that is proprioceptively responding to contact, which means that it's the foot that is doing the balancing. And that will happen to some degree anyway. Your, your ankle and your foot will be kind of doing its thing, they're lifting and dropping. But if the, if the foot is not that responsive, then it'll mean that the rest of you also has to be tense. Um, let me just give you a, it's a kind of chicken and egg thing. Hang on, let me go back to that one. Um, it's a chicken and egg thing. If you hold yourself up with your with tension around the spine, usually the base of the spine, and uh, sit bones, buttocks, that sort of thing, knees and thighs, if uh, and and even even uh, fixing your ankle can um, do this, if you hold yourself up with those things, it kind of cuts off the possibility of using your feet. Uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Um, uh, try this. Uh, pull, flex your ankle as far as you can go. Pulling the you know pulling the top of the foot as close to your face as you can. And you'll find that everything pulls along the front, you know, and, and this is taught as a thing to do because it kind of feels okay, you know, to do it. It feels nice to work your body like that in some ways. But try and do something interesting with your foot without letting that go. Try to see how the toes move. Mine, mine move a tiny bit. They kind of feel a bit 
stupid. <laughs> they kind of feel a bit, um, a bit sort of restricted, right? And it's because everything else is um, involved in supporting you. Now, now if you uh, relax your leg, spread your toes and curl them up and sort of see if you can point with the big toe, see if you can point, well, hitchhike with the big toe and then point, point it away from you. And all those things will involve the ankle um, and the toes, but it will be you expressing with the foot. And when you're standing, you, you want the, the inner and outer foot, which is a function of your inner outer ankle and of your toes, um, your inner and outer foot to naturally um, respond to contact. So I'm going back to standing. Um, so I'm sort of explaining the issue rather than giving you a solution at the moment. So if you, if you stand without, if you stand mostly on your heels and your foot isn't really doing anything, then it's not being given the job of proprioceptive support, as in it's not balancing you. So instead of the muscles of the, the foot and the ankle and the toes lifting and wobbling to, to uh, balance your weight, um, instead of that, you'll have tension in your thighs around the base of the spine and other things. And when you've got uh, tension around the um, sciatic nerve, which uh, emanates, uh, well, yeah, uh, the sciatic nerve, which is near the base of the spine when you hold tension across there, um, that restricts the signals to your feet to work. So, you know, uh, people that hold themselves up with their backs and other things, um, rather than rely on their feet, trust their feet, and that's the, that's the baseline issue, um, that holding will actually prevent the foot from being awake. <laughs> so it makes it, makes it, it means it, it can't respond. You might be able to, um, um, you know, if you try and balance on your foot, the moment you take the weight forwards, your foot will start wobbling side to side. And so the ankle part will do something. But if you can't, if the toes can't lift away from that, then you're not using your foot. You're balancing and the ankle is doing the proprioceptive wobbling. Okay. Uh, proprioceptive um, responses are automatic ones, ones that, um, uh, that the body um, s simply engages with without you deciding to do it um, in response to what is needed. Okay, so um, yeah, so if your foot isn't supporting you, then, the, then that leads to the rest, of the rest of the body tightness and rest of the body tightness leads to a dull foot that can't support you. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg thing. So one of, the, one of the first things you need to do is massage. You need to bring sensitivity to your foot. And um, simple thing, I've done this with you before DB and, and uh, yeah, foot massage. Um, so um, just uh, take hold of a foot, the, the one you want to wake up. Uh, I'm going to do the other one. And first of all, just give it a bit of a squeeze. And uh, I might, can I do a focus thing? Can I zoom in a bit? Let's see, is that, is that too close? There you go. So I don't know if you can see, see that. Sorry, my, sorry about the dirty soles of my feet. But um, yeah, the, When, when there's uh, a stiffness in your foot, where if it, even if it, there's a sort of structural complication in the foot, the thing that uh, that distorted structure, and this goes for bunions and all sorts of things, the thing that that distorted structure needs to, for the tissue around it to release tension is to come back together. So when you massage your foot, the, the, the first thing to do is to kind of put it together, give it a little squeeze in a sideways fashion to start with so that the toe the bones of the foot the, bo the bones of the toes that travel into the foot um it's not very bright let's see if i can 
sharpen it up. Um, the bones that travel into the foot. Uh, yes, it's quite dark. Hang on a sec. There we go. Um, yes, it, it, the stiffness isn't in the bones. The stiffness is in the, uh, the tissue that has grown around the bones. So when you squeeze bones together through the uh, side to side, then the tissue between the toes, within the foot, starts to loosen up. Okay. Then another thing you can do is to sort of feed the bones back together through their axis. So if, if for example, you have um, a, a big toe that's out of whack because of a bunion, you know, um, it would look, it would go that way. Yeah. Then you take hold of the big toe and you sort of give it back to the joint that is that will be inflamed. You give it back to it and in a physical way you, you sort of pull or push through the end of the toe so that it feeds into that joint and because it'll be feeding in at a strange angle uh, uh, I wasn't intending to talk about bunions but but um, it's an example it's a, a principle uh, it, it offers a, an example of a principle so you're pressing into the joint but then once it's kind of together with it if you support the other side you can then mobilize that joint by by keeping it fed in and then circling and this is the thing i gave you to do db when we first met um and so you know that's for a bunion joint that's that particular joint but you've got joints all the way through that foot to the ankle so a sense of kind of physically quite firmly feeding each toe back into the foot without it buckling so so you go through the bones I'm trying to get be able to show you here so you go through the bones so you organize it with your hands so that the, bone, the toe doesn't buckle and then you feed that into the foot through the rest of the bones that the toes make yeah and when you've got that through feeling you can you can sort of sense the support the the line of support through the um, toe bones and then you just sort of articulate a little bit by making little circles you do that for all your toes and then w w when you, when you've um, done that, that that should help give you a clearer sense of foot and you massage the spaces in between so you can, you dig in into the spaces in between the toes because you can now you should be able to and you give them a good squeeze I won't spend too long on it because um, well, I want to get onto the standing bit. Then you can explore the ranges of movement, and one of the ranges is in that direction, where you stick a thumb in the centre of the foot, and you take hold of the toe bones, and you pull towards um, kind of point, uh, to, uh, point, point of the foot. That, that's one direction. And the other direction, which might be hard for some people, is to um, feed your fingers between each toe um, and stick your fingers on top of the foot to spread the toes in the other direction. Now, when you've, got, when you've, when you've done that, if you've got your hand in your foot like that, then you take hold of the heel bone as a separate article and you kind of pull so that it's separate. And then, then you can twist the whole of the foot this way and that with the heel bone kind of stabilized. Um, yeah, most people think of the heel as a sort of solid, just a, you know, the same as the rest of the foot. It's, it needs to be able to articulate separately. And if you've got hold of it, you might feel that it's actually got some range of movement. Okay, so you can turn the heel, you can turn the foot. Okay, and then just to finish off the thing, you sweep up through the foot and you sweep up, if you can imagine it, between the two bones of the leg. There's, a, there's two bones in the leg and if you dig into the sides of the calf, um, you can sort of find the spaces and you drag up towards the knee. And that, that should help clear the pathways, if you like. All right. 
just that um, so yeah that's, that's a start uh, it's a thing to do whenever you're you've got a moment you know whenever you're sitting and you can reach your foot um, or feet and um, but having done one let's just um, stand up and feel the difference whoops wrong one there we go So first of all, um, stand on the other foot, the one you didn't massage. And you'll, f you'll feel that sort of um, the usual kind of gripping dullness, I expect. And then the other foot, it will be more sensitive. So just sort of delicately to start with, with no weight, just f feel the ground with the underside of the roots of the toes, so the front of the foot ball of the foot, little toe corner, just gently lay the skin down and then gently allow the heel to drop so that it can touch as well and then take the weight through that and it should feel a bit more like you're planting your weight on a responsive foot and if you compare the two, the one that you massaged and arrived on with care will probably respond by opening as you put your weight through through it because your foot is actively touching the ground and the result you know there'll be other efforts but it won't be the same as the dull one when you put your weight through the dull one you'll feel yourself catching your weight and holding yourself holding that weight whereas the sensitive one you make it sensitive you you have to be in your foot it's, you can't do it to your foot you have to be in it then the touch of that foot arriving gently so front of the foot light to start with and then allowing the heel to drop and then transferring your weight to that in the moment of transfer you should find that the foot responds and it responds in the way that it's meant to as in it opens because the foot opening causes um, this is why people are taught to spread their toes in yoga um, the the opening of the foot is kind of an expression of touch uh, an expression of supportive touch and that open foot becomes the place that you're giving your weight to and there's all sorts of other responses that go with that in the body that are different from holding your weight up it's more to do with the breath and the core and other things. Uh, it might lead to unusual sensations and if those muscles are not used to doing the work then that will feel intense but it should feel more grounded. Okay and uh, you'll also another thing that will happen is you'll feel a lot of work on the inside of the calf because um, uh, when we uh, sort of lift off lift our foot with our ankles and then put our weight down in our standing um, that that's using the gross muscles of the the bigger muscles of the calf in, in walking and standing when you use your foot there are muscles from the toes that run up the lower leg that are involved in proprioceptive support and it's not about you holding your foot open it's about you giving the job of support to your foot now, if you go off balance, then the, to then the toes of that foot will grip because it's supposed to. But then when you put balance, when you give weight equally to that foot, then what you want is for the toes to be able to open in response to the touch of that foot, you engaging with the earth. Okay. So the first things first, um, you can't like this foot that I've not massaged. If I send the signal to spread my foot, I'm just spreading a foot. And then I'm sort of holding the tension of a spread foot and that trying to balance over it. Right? It's not the same thing. So the massage part is, is, is really quite important. But let, let's say you've done both feet. Um, if you haven't, then just work with the one that you have massaged. Now let's give it a bit more of a job. Same, same sort of arrival, gentle arrival in touch same sort of gentle arrival and touch 
same idea is you want the heel to relax to drop down away from you with that touch and that that arrival means that you can transfer your weight to the front of the foot now uh, to, the, to the whole of the foot not just the heel that's the important part so when people are working with me I quite often get them to see if they can balance their weight on the front of the foot so you could try that see if you can trust the front of the foot to take your weight and what and um, what that will be doing and this is another exercise that is useful uh, I was I was thinking one day this would um, this would be some this would be a kind of um, unilaterally useful thing for people to do every now and again would be to walk around on your toes the idea being not to hold yourself up but to learn to trust your feet okay so if you can take the weight through the fronts of the feet then and especially if you can balance your weight on the front of a foot then the kind of proprioceptive strength that you develop provided you're not trying to hold yourself up away from the ground if you can give your weight down to that foot then the the what your the, the things that do the balancing is basically your ankle and the toes if it's too much ankle then that will cut off the toes the, the, the signals to lift the toes not not just to do it to your foot but the signal to lift your toes is the thing that pulls your weight down through the foot through the toes okay, so having the intention to have open feet and having massaged that possibility in it doesn't matter if the toes actually lift or not it's just sending that signal is your the way that you proprioceptively balance and <clears throat> another another simple rule of thumb is um, trying to get the pressure about even because most people have a fa favored side you know uh, people with problems on the inside of the knee will be on the outside of the foot people with problems on the outside of the knee will be on the inside of the foot probably okay so just walking around padding around on your toes trying to relax as you do so so you don't give your knees any any problem in fact this is something that can sort knee problems out because that proprioceptive response in the feet is the thing that stabilizes the knee rather than the knee having to stabilize itself and you will get um, proprioceptive responses on the muscles around the outside of the knee but it won't be the usual thing that people do which is pull the knees up in order to hold their weight down okay? instead of that you pull the toes up a little bit if you need to think of it okay so that that's a good thing to do <clears throat> if if, um, if you have knee hip lower back issues taking weight through the fronts of your feet is a really good solution and just do it for half a day see if you can pad around on the fronts of, the, of your feet for half a day and notice the difference it will change your whole body okay so once you've strengthened that responsiveness of the fronts of the feet and evened it out by getting the weight uh, to be able to be received evenly between the inner and outer foot, then you can do the same thing as you did when you were kind of sensitively arriving on the ground, which is allow the heel to lower from that support. So you're not taking your weight back and putting it on the heel you you allow the leg to open and it, uh, I'm, I'm using the words allow because I, I don't want you to pull your knee straight you allow the heel to drop away from you and that will happen more from the hip than the knee joint and this uh, this sort of develops the, a more natural set a more natural way of supporting yourself um, so that instead of holding your weight up away from the ground to pull you down you give the weight to the front of the foot and then the touch of the heel will cause the hip to support you in an inwards direction if that makes sense so <clears throat> you should be feeling some strong sort of proprioceptive kind of work on the outside of the hip not the groin okay 
What else? Um, the other thing that restricts the foot is tension around the base of the spine. So if you if you can find that balance in front of the foot and and just check, pardon me. And just uh, yeah, if as you find the um, balance through the front of the foot, when the heel drops away from you, it wants to sort of drop away from your lower back uh, and take take the sacrum with it a little bit. And the way that happens is when you have core responses. So planting the front of the foot evenly so that it can take your weight. Allowing the hip to gather up away from the ground to allow the heel to descend to the ground. That gathering up sort of goes with a gathering within the belly, which um, you could call core support if you like. So you draw your navel back a bit. And here's the key is when that heel drops, you kind of want to drop the weight within you with the heel. And that goes with the release of the breath. That will give you a sort of natural supportive relationship between the space within, the outside of the hip, and the landing of that heel. Even though what you're intending to give your weight to is the front of the foot, the, the weight within you is given to the heel. If that makes any sense. And that should leave you feeling pretty stable. Because you're in the balance of touching the ground, you're in the business of touching the ground rather than trying to balance your weight over a point, if that makes sense. You have, your, your feet may grip sometimes and that will invite a stronger core responsiveness. Okay? Um, they, but don't, try not to hold the gripping. You know, try and relax into that foot, especially if you've got the other, if you're doing tree, if you've got the other foot standing on the thigh, you can relax your weight, the weight of this leg, into the contact with that thigh. And if your whole body weight, organized from within, can be given to the whole foot, and the foot can still respond proprioceptively, it'll be your foot that does the balancing. So, you know, my, um, my idea is, once the foot is active, don't make it unnecessarily active. Try and relax into it and allow the foot to do its job. In fact, the more you relax your weight into it, the stronger the toes become. And they, you can't see it on the camera, but the toes are, are doing their proprioceptive job. They're trying to live, they can't, but they're trying to uh, by themselves as I relax my weight into contact. That will be exhausting <laughs> for the muscles of the foot and exhausting for the, some muscles in your calf. I'm just going to do the other side. So once again, inner and outer foot equal. It should feel like touch, not doing something to your foot. The heel can drop as the hip and core gather together away from it. and that will happen more naturally with the release of the breath. Then you're giving your weight down, should be giving your weight down quite naturally through the whole of that foot, and the foot should naturally respond to overbalance. So if you're too far in, the inside of the foot will press. If you're too far out, the outside of the foot will press. If you're giving your weight down, then you don't really need to pick your weight up. So all you need to do is place, transfer that foot as best you can to the other thigh and give your weight through that leg to the thigh so that the foot touching the ground is all that's needed for you to let go of your weight. Now, it's the letting go that makes it... Um, the posture it's it's as asana asana means um, comfortable seat if you can let go in contact includes the foot on the thigh so you need both feet to be active really oops if you can let go into contact from within 
and it'll be the breath that is um, relating to contact and support. And that, and that inner support, that inner support relating to the ground will allow you to let go. Now, you know, I fell over, so will you, because the intention is to relax, not to hold yourself there. You know, we're so fixated in um, achieving the task that we think we're trying to do that we tend to lose the point of it. The point is to let go. Can I let go of the weight of this leg into this thigh? Can I let go into the standing foot so that this thigh meets this leg? Can I let go of the breath within myself so I can let go of my weight into the ground? Can I let go of my chest? Can I let go of my head? So that I can let go into space. That's the point, you see. Now all of that work will make your feet and your calf muscles very strong, very tense. And if you don't do something to relieve the um, tension of it, then you'll end up with dull feet again. So, a little massage, you squeeze the bones together, you feed the toes into the foot, through the bones, all the way to the ankle, all the way up into the ankle, all the way up through the ankle to the knee. You, are, you play with the tissue between the, the toes of the foot, you rotate, you twist, you point, you stretch, and you try and separate the heel so you can start to think of the front of the foot as your actual foot and the heel as something you can give away from you and pulling on it will give you that space uh, the feeling of space in your ankle and foot yeah. um, so you can give the weight within you to the touch of the heel A lot of content there. Um, but yeah. So, there you go, DB, and anyone else that's watching. I um, hope that was useful. Feel free to share it around Facebook and anywhere else you might, you think might, people might benefit. And come and join me on one of my Saturday morning workshops, or if you have some specific issue going on that you want to see if I can help you with, then um, you can book a free 15 minute consultation with me on my website and um, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> okay, yeah, come and, come and work with me on, on, a, on one of my Saturdays. They're every Saturday, 10.30 to 1. So it's a very informal group. Uh, it's always um, a deep dive into something and it's always kind of organized in, term, um, in a way that suits the needs of the participants. So um, I'd like to see you there. All right, much love to you all now. That's all from me, Mark J. Akraviva. This has been your Yoga Solutions Live. I shall see you same time, same place next week. Bye now. <laughs>